Make sure that's recording. Well, hello, shiny, crafty people. It's Tim Totten here, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanna to walk you through 10 great sewing tools that are under $10 each. Now, I have brought you videos before um, about sewing tools, specifically a couple of weeks ago, uh, five specialty sewing tools I didn't know I needed. Uh, I also brought you 10 amazing gifts for sewists and quilters. Um, but all those items range from like close to $20 up to over $1,100. And I wanted to prove to myself and to you that great sewing tools don't have to cost an arm and a leg. And so for that, I went and started looking for all the kind of tools that I use and could use that cost less than $10. So um, I will be bringing you the Amazon links in the description below. Just understand, uh, that's just the most universal place for people to get them. You do not have to go to Amazon and buy these. In fact, if you have a local sewing store or quilt store in your area, you should totally go there and spend your money there. Um, if you do order off of Amazon, uh, it is an affiliate link for me, which means I make like a couple of percent uh, if you buy from there. Your prices don't change, obviously. Uh, it's the same as if you just bought them yourself, but if you want to support the channel, you're welcome to do that. Uh, but let's get into it. There are 10 of these. Um, I'm not gonna put them in any particular order. I kind of grouped them by the way things work together, but everyone loves a countdown, so we'll start with 10. Number 10 is something I hope you're doing already, which are clips. These fantastic clips. And you know, I have been so used to using straight pins. If you're like me, you've used straight pins for hundreds of years or well, really, I've only been doing this like 30 something. Uh, and these are great, except hmm, sometimes the problem with pins are when I pin fabric together and I go to sew it, I'm more likely to sew over top of that pin as I'm going along the edge. And um, no matter how safe you are, the odds are uh, that needle could break as it goes through the pin or around the pin and then it shoots towards your face. I do wear um, safety goggles that also help my eyes see. Uh, but it really, the best way to keep yourself from ever getting hurt with a flying needle is just not to sew over your pins. So in fact, you're better off using clips if it's something on the edge. I just lost my fabric here at the bottom. So it's much better for you to like, if you need to put these edges of fabric together would be to clip them. And the other great part is as you're sewing along, let's say you're sewing along there, um, when you get to the, the clip, you actually have to take the clip off and you won't, you can't sew over these. Trust me, I've tried to sew over them. It's, it's impossible. You do have to take them off. So as you're sewing, you would pull the clip off and then they're out of the way. Just give yourself some little kind of container off to the side that you can put them in um, when you're done with them and see so you hold on to them. And these are super cheap. You'll see in the description below, there's any number you can get for less than $10. Number nine is similar to this and number nine are hemming clips. Now I wanna show you the box that these came in. I have to find them. Oh, here we go. Uh, I'm going to show you here. These are sewing clips. Um, here, I'll also show them to you close up. And what I like about these is they have measurement on them. So the measurement on them allows you to, let's say we're going to hem this particular piece of fabric over, and I want to hem it two inches. So I could, instead of having to measure all that out, I could literally put these clips on it and set it to zero right along the edge. There's a zero on that. It might not be easy to see. But I can go, let's say I want it hemmed at two inches. I can move that back until I get to that point. And I could do that along the entire thing. And this is also really useful if you want to sew along and sew to a certain number. So we could set this up and then just sew to the one inch mark that goes along here, which is in this area. You could sew to the one inch mark as you went along. And you can also iron over this. So I have my iron set up here and I could just come in and literally iron in between, iron over it. Now they're metal, so you're gonna burn yourself if you touch them right after you did that. But these are interesting hemming clips. Uh, I like that quite a lot. And so um, I want you to check those out. I'm gonna change some adjustments here a little bit. Ooh. You're closer. I love it, you're closer. All right, so those are the hemming clips and you'll see, ooh, they're still a little warm. Uh, those are fun, but I have to tell you, there's actually, something even better, and it's our next one. Number eight is a hot hem ruler. As you see it here, a hot hem ruler. And the cool thing about a hot hem ruler is it is heat resistant up to 428 degrees Fahrenheit, or uh, if you're in the rest of the world, not in the United States, that's 220 degrees Celsius. 
that's pretty hot. It also has a miter angle on it. I'm gonna oh, go ahead and open this up and pull out the hammer, the, the um, hot hem ruler. This was under $10. I was completely amazed. I may rip the, the package. I don't know, I don't wanna do that. Oh, there we go. It's made out of a heat resistant uh, plastic material, but it is supposed to be resistant to heat. And I have used one of these before and I really like the way it worked. So this is also something you can use the measurements on it to um, figure out your hemming. So you'll see that there are measurements along it, a one inch measurement, a two inch measurement. So let's say I wanted to do this as a, um, to fold this over, I'm gonna flip it the other way. I wanted to hem this over at, whew, let's say to two inches. I'm getting plastic stuck to me. That's a preview of something else. I could place this here and put the mark to two inches. So there I know where the two inches is and I can slide it over until I get the two inches come over. And now that's gonna give me a two inch hem because I've literally marked it on the two inch line. I'm sliding it over and then I can hem, I can iron directly on top of this. So now I can come in literally iron directly over top of that. And I'm not warping this plastic at all. It is gonna get warm. It will get a little warm, so you don't wanna to touch it right away. But that put in a nice hem for me. And well, the, this, the, the iron line. And then now by doing that, I know I have my two inch mark there. You would practice with this and get a lot better uh, as you go along, but it also has nice mitering lines on it too. So if you wanted to miter some corners, Pretty cool. I think this is uh, definitely a win for less than $10. And you know, I just put that away and I was like, I'm done talking. This would have worked out really well on my video for the square in a square nine patch that I created, that super easy nine patch. I'll put a link in the description below for this video. This is literally just one middle square of fabric and one outside square of fabric. And then I actually just folded it in such a way to sew that but I used a piece of card stock or, or um, card, like heavier cardboard, but not cardboard, but like board that's chipboard, should I say? And I used that to fold over these edges and it would have been much easier had I had the hot hem ruler at the time. Uh, it's basically, I use this it for that purpose and you could use one of these for to do that. I'll put a link in the description below to this video, uh, which you've just seen a little clip of it right here anyway. Number seven is actually something that was in my video called um, five sewing tools I didn't know I needed. It is a wooden clapper, and this is for pressing and ironing. Now, interestingly enough, the, the set that I showed you had two clappers in it, and they were like 18 or $19. However, this one, uh, it's not this exact one, because I'm not buying another one, I have two now. Uh, but the one I'm gonna link in the description below, you can find it for less than $10. And the idea is, is that you will, and I may have explained it wrong the last time. You would iron your fabric, and then you can bring the clapper over top of it to help set that seam. What the wood clapper does is it um, it actually absorbs the heat into the wood, setting this, the seam by pulling some of the heat out of the, the fabric. So um, I think I said it wrong the last time, and so I'm glad I'm sort of explaining it better this time. But you can get a clapper like this, at least on Amazon, for less than $10, a single one, and you might be able to find it in other stores as well. Now I was sewing there because I need to show you the next tool, which is number six. Number seven was the clapper. Did I say that? Number six is a feeder for string. If you're going to make a, a, a tube or like, it's better to see on the back of this. You know, if you're trying to put anything through a pair of shorts or um, maybe a bag that you made and you need to put some string through it, this is one way to do it. This is a seven piece tool set that I got, and I'm gonna literally show you all of the pieces here that came with it, and I'll show you what they do. Specifically, um, I think there might be one more little one that I can't necessarily find because I have so many things on this. Oh, here it is. So I'm gonna show you what all of those do. Let me get sort of a, a string that I can use. Well, this is gonna stand in for um, cording or string or rope. Um, you have this 
here that I've got. What I did is I went ahead and sewed on here, and I'll show it to you here. I sewed a channel that I can put something through. So um, what I'm gonna do is, using this tool, I will um, take the two holes here, and I will feed this section right here through my tube that I created, or my valley or my channel or whatever they want to call it. So I'm going to feed that through there. And if it was a super long one, you can see you can get quite a lot on here because there's a lot of there's a lot of that material. And then I'll feed the end of the fabric through once one of these. This is fine. It's going to hold it now. And as I pull this back out, it will pull that oh, it'll pull that through the tube. And you'll see here, it literally pulls the entire thing through that tube. And now it's ready to go. I can cinch that up. It's gonna work out great. You know, um, that's one particular way that you can do it. So I'm gonna take this off and pull the material back out and show you the other versions. So um, some of the other versions, this particular version has a little hooky thing at the end. Do you see that? Ooh. So this would be for something quite small or something you can snag onto. Um, this could be for turning tubes as well. So I don't really want to use that for this. This one though is interesting. Do you see the shape of this? I'll put this here. These are both this sort of the same, but um, they're similar. This one though, you would pop it open so that now it clinches. And I will place this here and clinch it together and then Tighten that down. So now that's holding on really, really well. And now what I can do is feed this one through to the other side. So a similar idea. I, I'm a big fan of the longer, skinnier type of thing, but because I also have to get the fabric to separate. There we go. And I can feed that through the entire piece. Just gotta make sure it's still recording up above. <laughs> So you would do that and pull that thread, that fabric through, and there you go. You would pull whatever string or whatever it is you're trying to pull, and it would pull through, same way. Now the last part, and I don't think I made a big enough um, piece for this, the last is are these, and these are actually meant to be used for elastic. They're elastic turner uh, pullers. And I do have a piece of elastic here, but it's not gonna, I don't think it's gonna fit. It's a very large piece of elastic. This might be too wide. We don't use a lot of other elastic here at our workshop, so this is what we use here. Um, so uh, it's gonna be a little big. I don't know that it'll fit through there. But we can pretend that this is elastic here. So let's say I have a small elastic and you could, I'll use the bigger one. No, I need the smaller one so it'll fit. Which one's gonna fit in the hole? Let's try. Um, this yellow one definitely will, but will this pink one? Eh, mostly, Let's see if it'll fit the other end. Oh, that's gonna be difficult. Let's use the yellow one. So you would feed your elastic through the opening on this. This yellow one, yellow is gonna be a little hard to see. And you could feed it back through if you needed to, to really hold on. And then you just put it much like the others through, and then you can actually feel it. And what you would do is you would hold the back with one hand like this. I'm holding that back section, but in the fabric, I'm gonna hold it there and then I'm gonna push the fabric along it. Cause see, that's where the other end is right here. See that? So what I'm doing is pushing the fabric on and then I'm using these fingers to sort of grab, grab onto that fabric. And I can push a lot, you'll notice, I can put quite a lot on there. It really, it'll really, um, it'll really bunch up. And now I've got all that fabric just on that one small uh, yellow piece. And here now I grab that end, and then my goal is to just pull it through. And there we go, same way. So that's the seven in one uh, set. I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside. So we move on to the next one. 
The next item, which is number five, actually, I can't find it in my workshop here. I've had it for like five or six years. It's called that purple thing. And I'm gonna show you a picture of what that looks like here on the screen. And this is actually so many tools in one. A point turner, it'll do that elastic thing I just showed you with those elastic uh, drawstrings. It'll help you be able to pull drawstrings through things. It is so useful. Um, I think you should buy one uh, or several. Now there are some on Amazon that you can buy uh, super cheap. I've linked them, but I've also, um, I've actually not linked the super cheap ones that you can buy four or five. I don't think you need four or five, um, although it sounds like I do because I've lost the only one I have. Um, it's here somewhere. You just know how that is. I'll find it right after I finish this video. Uh, the uh, the purple thing is, was made by a uh, a woman here in the United States, and she's you know done all the work to create this product and sell it to people. And it's made in the United States, but some people have copied her, and they now make them in another country for super cheap, probably because they're not paying anybody very much money to do them. And so you can buy six or eight of them for the price of one of hers. However, hers are still less than ten dollars. So my suggestion is if you really like it, buy one from her. It'll be made in the United States, so it's gonna be better quality. And you're gonna be supporting a entrepreneur in the United States. Number four is for turning tubes. You'll see it here. This is a tube turner set. It comes in three different sizes. These are fabric tube turners. I'm going to get the one inch and larger fabric tubes. That's the middle one here. You will see that there are multiple sizes, but I've already made a tube. You'll see I made a tube here. One end is open. And the way I use these is actually rather simple. I'm gonna put the tube right in to the, the fabric, the plastic tube into my fabric tube, okay? And I'm going to make sure, no matter how long you make it, you should be able to bunch up. I'm not gonna let the bottom go in. I'm gonna hold that fabric outside of the bottom. I'm gonna get it till it lies flat at the top and I'm just gonna use my finger here to hold it in. And then I'm gonna use this, the not sharp point here on the end of this and just start pushing it in. And when I get to, and I'm letting the fabric go because it needs to do that. As I get to the other end, it pushes that tube out and I can now take this stick out if I want or use the stick to really open that end of that tube up. You see I'm doing, I'm, that sticks in there and I'm just using it to push that end. And now I can take the stick out and I can continue to pull the fabric through the tube. And now I've created my fabric tube. And now I can just use my iron and flatten it out. That's a super simple fabric tube made with the tube turner set. And you get three different sizes. Number three is a fantastic bobbin holder. Now, this is one you can get, and I will link this in the description below. I'll call this the rectangular one, but not everyone needs this particular kind. This is one we use in our workshop that clips closed and opens. Um, I actually like also, I found this one for less than $10 and it's a round one. And I like this particularly because um, it can, you can actually put this around your, you know, your little, um, if you have a small enough um, pin cushion would be kind of cute. And they pop in. So you'll see they're not gonna fall out. They clip into it. It comes with like 25 uh, different, bobbins that came with it and they pop in and out which is really nice you can see all your bobbins and actually it even uses the metal bobbins that I use for our Janome 1600p um, literally pop in and out as well number two on this list are these cleaning brushes now I want to show you these a little more up close because I was super surprised we use cleaning brushes uh, for our own uh, for our sewing machines here at the at uh, my workshop and I use them at my home for my home sewing machine uh, but these little br and we also use a vacuum kit which is not less than ten dollars so these are less than ten dollars look at these they are like a silicone tip end and I'm going to show you cleaning my sewing machine with them so in fact let's move you around a little bit so you get a better look at what we're going to do here well I'm going to have to flip that around So here in the machine, I can use this to really clean very easily around all the areas that I need to. And you'll see, look how it's picking up so much junk out of there. And because it's like a sticky silicone, it's actually picking all that stuff up. So you imagine if I go in and around 
all the parts. I mean, look what I've just cleared out of this machine in almost no time. Now, we do clean these machines once a week, and it's probably the fact that tomorrow is the day to clean them, but wow, look at what you can do with this little brush. And it's not gonna leave hairs anywhere because it's actually a brush made of plastic and silicone. That entire bag comes with all of those for less than $10. Literally, it's an entire bag of, look at all those, for less than 10 bucks. Crazy good. And number one might very well be the number one item that is available uh, for less than $10. And in fact, you're gonna get two of them. This is what the item looks like. Let me show it to you here. And this is what's interesting. It's, it's, if you think about what is this gonna be for, uh, number one, this is a zipper jig tool. Imagine you need to put a zipper on, you literally turn the zipper upside down, facing away from you, put it down in, it's now held on. Now it does come with, by the way, uh, mounting material, so you can mount it onto something, will make it a lot easier to do. So that's gonna be a lot easier than how I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with it. And then you take your zipper. Now this zipper, I'm gonna open it up, the two sides of the zipper, and you simply put the two sides, well, I've done it the wrong way. Hold on, I gotta turn it this way. You gotta put it with the opening at the top. So what you're doing is you're actually fitting the zipper down onto, holding it onto it so that all this area is exposed. I put that down there and then I bring, now I gotta turn them backwards, by the way. I, the teeth have to face away from me. You can't do the teeth this way. The teeth face, face away from you and then you bring them both down through. And if you had it mounted onto something, it would be very easy to do that. But literally now my zipper is installed. And I wanna show you that it does different size zippers. So in fact, I have a smaller zipper here, a much smaller one. And you, look, look how much smaller this zipper is than this one, obviously a lot smaller. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna turn that exactly away from me and bring it down. And it went on there, look, it fit. It literally fit right onto that. So now what I can do is I've got to open up my zipper and open it away from me and put the two sides on. Uh, this again is a practice item. Putting on zippers is practice anyway, but doing it this way is kind of helpful if you had it mounted to something. I don't know we're gonna mount it in our workshop yet, so I'm afraid to do to do any mounting yet before I would do it, but I'm gonna just push it with my fingers that way. Look at that, look how easy that is. I'm just able to push it and now look. So easy to do. So there you have it, that is 10 amazing sewing products that are available for less than $10 each. Uh, again, there's uh, there are uh, links in the description below for all of the items that I showed you um, on Amazon, which is the place where I found them all for less than $10, but you still might find them at your local quilt shop or your local fabric shop for uh, that price as well. I hope you will enjoy this list. And until next time, folks, stay crafty. Bye for now. Gosh, I didn't even get to the really great uh, seam rippers or some of the other stuff. I guess I might have to make a part two soon. Who knows? Stay tuned.